Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes It Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we are looking at the Sun Lu S2 filament drying box, which is just about to be launched on Kickstarter on the 16th of November. So make sure you get yourself over there to have a quick look. The device is very much a filament drying box. I've not had to use one of these before, but it has shown me a couple of things about the humidity that's actually in my room at the moment, how this could perhaps change the way that I look at filament drying in the future. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that like button. It helps the channel out and it goes a long way. The comments go down below. Let's get straight on into this. So friends, this is the Sunlu S2. It is not a overly complicated device. It does have 360 degree heating, which is in the form of kind of like a heat mat, a bit like you'd have in a vivarium if you kept reptiles and all that kind of crazy stuff. Um, it does take two types of filament. It can use 1.75 or it can use 2.85, depending on what your preference is. Uh, I'm going to be using 1.75 in this particular one. This is warming up really nicely, actually, and uh, I've been quite impressed with the uh, overall functionality of it. As you can see from the display, it is an LCD display. And in order to kind of move this around and set this up, all you need to do is press set. Now on this particular point here, you can change this from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Just like that. Very simple. SV is basically where you're gonna be setting the temperature of the uh, filament chamber. Time, this runs from any from, from zero to 99 hours. It's actually quite a huge amount of time if you're gonna be running an extremely long print. On your material settings, as we go down here, it runs in PETG, TPU, ABS, PA, PC, PLA, and at the bottom here we have the LED indicator. This little ring around the outside, if it annoys you too much, you can just switch it off. In default, it just pulses normally, so you get this ring here, and then sometimes it just moves up and down. Um, I quite like it as the uh, running rounds. That's, um, that's kind of quite a good preference for me. And then you have the on and off switches just up here. On the top right-hand corner, it's got a, it currently says 47% and RH. Now RH actually stands for relative humidity and what that basically means is how much humidity and water is actually present in the air uh, compared to how much there could be. So 100% would be everything would be very wet. 47% is actually quite high I think even for this particular room but it will change as temperatures change within the room and also air moving through the room as well. So sometimes when you get a slight lift in the corner of a print for example you might find that actually it's probably something to do with airflow in the room and sometimes print either printing a blocker or actually encasing the print actually gives you a better overall print addition to your build space you also get this quite a lot with filaments such as abs where they start lifting in the corners or they take on too much moisture this box should help you along the way hopefully with this what we do now is talk about actually some of the ideal settings that this should have because what you don't want to be doing of course is getting this too hot because that might lead to the filament sweating or possibly becoming brittle or even breaking down when it's actually printed so here are some of the ideal settings for your filament dryer so for PLA and PLA plus it's 40 to 45 degrees for around about four to five hours for ABS it's suggested that 65 to 70 degrees and two to six hours for PETG, 65 to 70 for four to six hours. If you're feeling adventurous with nylon, it's 75 to 90 for four to six hours. TPU, 45 to 60 degrees for four to five hours. And finally, polycarbonate, 80 to 90 degrees Celsius for eight to 10 hours. But this does, of course, top out at 70 degrees, so you are going to have a few limitations, if they're really even limitations, because even heating it at 70 degrees for five or six hours is probably still going to be better than nothing, right? Either way, I am going to assume that as I go into my first few days of testing this device. So looking over at Kickstarter, it looks like Sunlu actually launched the S1 earlier this year to a pretty good audience of 2,580 sales, making $156,000 or £116,000. The S1, it looks like to me that it just had heating elements at the bottom rather than being this 360 design. So it looks like the November date is obviously the uh, updated version of this. And if you click through here, obviously the site for the new Kickstarter uh, campaign on the S2 isn't launched yet. That comes out on the 16th. So again, make sure that you check back to the Kickstarter page for that. Uh, and I'm imagining they're also going to be doing some special offers as well. So if you are in the marketplace at the moment for 
a dryer, which I think most people should be really, if they're any, if they're actually serious at printing, then this will be probably one of the ones that you might want to look at. They are doing some deals at the moment on the S1, so that's also a consideration if you're thinking about getting something and you need it right away. So I did think it was worth pointing out as well that I am not the biggest fan of Kickstarter campaigns, mainly because of the risks that are involved. So make sure that you check out the risks before you make the purchase. All that being said, though, Sunlu have been around for quite some time now, supplying filament to all sorts of different areas and even white labeling a lot of it as well. I use a lot of Sunlu filament, in fact, for prototyping. Uh, so if I'm doing something on a rather large scale and I want to sort of see how this is going to print first, I might use Sunlu filament for that kind of stuff. And that's mainly down to the value of the filament. The pricing on the website is currently at £62.50. I imagine that being a kickstarting campaign, they're going to probably put it out for a little bit less than that. Certainly if you buy multiples of these and perhaps you'll get yourself a bargain on this particular campaign. What I like about Sunlu is you can buy multiples of up to 10 kilos of uh, filament at any one go. So I'll put a little link in the description if you wanna check those ones out. So jogging back to the Sunlu website, just looking at the S1, as I say before, it's actually quite a good looking spool holder, in fact. Obvious issue is that it's not 360 heating if that really makes a big difference to things. But actually, I quite like the look of it. It looks like it's been covered in quite some detail by some uh, notable uh, YouTubers already, which is pretty good. And I'm hoping that any of the lessons that they've learned from that S1, they've maybe looked to change things in, uh, in the S2, which, uh, again, I've got no preference on because I've not owned the S1. But if you do own the S1, please make sure you leave a comment below and let me know what the differences are going to be between the two. So let's talk about some of the stuff I like and some of the stuff I don't like so much. Now, first and foremost, we'll take the uh, filament out of here now. That's nice and warm, actually. So inside here, as you can see, it does have this, uh, this heating mat that obviously keeps everything warm. It's actually very well built. It looks the business. The only thing I think I'm gonna really struggle with with this is being able to see the filament and understand how much is left in there without having to lift this up. Now, a lot of the printers that I have generally feed downwards. So again, this is gonna be slightly at a disadvantage, the fact that this comes out. This is meant to sort of feed to the side, I believe. Um, it's a bit of a shame that this is the only hole at the top here. So other than that, and probably uh, being able to maybe plug this into the printer power supply maybe i think it only draws about an amp i know it's 24 volt it might be quite nice to be able to put this and mount this to the top it might be nice also to see in the future perhaps you know a different hole maybe down here or you can maybe plug the holes depending on where you want to you know run your filament out so it might be nice if it was maybe coming out the bottom or something so there was one more thing actually that i wanted to point out to you and that's on switching it on and switching it off now because there are no instructions with this particular model uh, I've had to kind of learn kind of on the job, I guess. And what I noticed was when you press the power button just once, it doesn't actually turn it off. And what I learned is the reason for that is because you need to press it twice. And then it switches it off. And also to switch it on, double press. And that stops you from turning this off by accident. So two clicks to go off, two clicks to go on. So... Little top tip there for you, because it had me bamboozled for a little bit, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so that's it. The Sunlu S2, should you back it on Kickstarter? Yes, I think you should. Uh, will I be buying more of these? Probably I will be, yes. Um, I'd like to see some stuff on uh, Things or Colts 3D on uh, perhaps adapting these to sit above a printer. Uh, maybe I'll design something myself. Watch this space. Don't forget, guys, to hit that subscribe button. I will be doing some giveaways in the next couple of weeks. So uh, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.